Welcome to Life Lessons and Lattes with Lanisha. I am super excited to have you joining us. You are now tuned in to episode three. I am Lanisha Porter of LanishaPorter.com and also the author of Maximizing Her. This book was released earlier this year and this book mainly talks about topics surrounding black womanhood, life tradition, legacy and life as we women know it and i'm super excited to be joined by my very very special guest miss alicia dawson i will give her a chance to introduce herself and tell her tell us a little bit about you yes so i'm so excited to be here today thank, thank you for you so coming much. girl of course so i am alicia dawson um uh, my day job is i'm a mental health therapist clinical therapist so i work with tons of individuals um treating mental health disorders such as depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, and many more. Um, so I also do blogging on the side. I have a personal motivational blog. It's at www.therapistbay.com. So, Therapist Bay. Yes, yeah, so everyone knows we've got Therapist Bay, so you guys can totally check me out. But yeah, so that's who I am. <laughs> yes, and she is also another Central alumna. Yes, I am. Class so, of 2011. That's right. So, so far we've just had Central graduates on here. Oh, so yeah, we have. So, we've been story yep. kind of letting yes, y'all know yes. that we mean business. Yes, so yes. How successful. Yes. Coming out of Central, yes. Ma'am. <laughs> All right. So, today we are going to be talking about Chapter 3 of my book, Maximizing Courage. Chapter 3 is titled, When You Meet Him. Hmm. Hmm. All right. So this book, this chapter in this book mainly talks about the first time you meet your first love and your defenses are knocked down and the realities that come with that and maybe even some of the fears and some of the experiences that I had with my first love. Yeah. So we're going to talk about it. Let's just jump right in. Let's do it. You ready? I am so ready. All right. Alicia. Yes. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> what is the craziest thing you've done in the name of love? Whew. I would have to say, to me, the craziest thing that I've done in the name of love is stay where I shouldn't have stayed. <laughs> what that means is I should have been left a certain relationship, a past relationship, but because that little love thing was just gushing from my heart, you know, and also because I saw potential and not the person, I stayed way longer than I should have. So that's the craziest thing I've ever done. It's love. so funny that you say that because that is literally my exact sentiment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I had to pose the question to myself, <laughs> right. the craziest thing that I've ever done in love yeah. also is staying when I knew. I knew. I should have did. I knew I should have did. It's, it's like, like our minds like, you know this ain't right. But you then know that it. heart is like, no. I can't. I let it you out. try to nurture that potential yes. and you, you're persistent and yes. you, by seeing just that potential so yes being yeah. loyal to potential is probably Whew. the craziest thing i've done in the name of love most definitely yep because you really do fall in love with the potential and not the person yeah yeah and i think um something else that i've learned is that you know sometimes guys when i talk to them they're like why can't females just live in the moment like why can't women just live in the moment like yeah. just enjoy we're young we're, yeah you know just be present yeah and it's like how can we enjoy the moment when we know that all of your potential is in the future that's why we're always looking forward to the future so exactly. speaking of being loyal to potential mm -hmm. why do you think so many women do that because I, I feel like that's such a widespread tendency that all women have being loyal to situations even in the moment when we see clearly there are some red flags here why do you think we do that um i think that many of us women are very loyal to potential i think because a lot of time men play a part in that too they make us be loyal to this potential um you know some men you know they tell us things like you know they're going to do this they're going to do that and then they don't Right, but us women, we hold on to them saying that they are gonna do it. Yeah. So we hold on to that and we hold them to it. Um, and a lot of times men show us otherwise that they're not gonna live up to that potential, but yet because they have told us and they in the position now to be next to us, then we think they will. They will. Yeah. As long as I do X, Y, and Z, then they'll live up to that potential. They'll do what I want them to do, right? Yeah. They'll move towards marriage or a relationship and having kids and loyalty and a monogamous relationship right yeah. all of these things that us women since childbirth has wanted right a marriage so um 
that's why I think a lot of us, um, us women, are loyal to potential. Yeah, and I think for me, um, something that sticks out to me why I think women have a tendency to be loyal to potential, especially if you're a woman of faith, you just think that if you persevere through those trying times, yep. then you will yep. qualify yourself and be finally deserving. Mm. It's almost like if I pass this test, then yes. I'm going to get the reward. Yes. And I think we often confuse that having loyalty or being loyal to potential, having faith is the same thing. Yes. Uh, because in life, sometimes, oftentimes, especially as a true believer, you are going to have to see things that are not there yet mm -hmm. in order to manifest them or materialize them. So I think that's why, you know, a yeah. lot of women hold on to that. Most definitely. And then our society today normalizes a lot of, um, a lot of bad traits in relationships, right? So yes. putting up with cheating, um, putting up with lots of things that I maybe like maybe even like 15 20 years ago that our society of women would not but in this society I think in today's generation it's just a lot of normalization around a lot of things that us women should not put up with yeah so um we and, just hold on to that and I think it also becomes especially dangerous when you see people spew rhetoric like Snoop Dogg. I don't mm. remember if you saw his Instagram post the other day and it was like a lot of y'all want this Keisha excuse me if I chop her name yeah keisha kaor yes keisha kaor uh -huh. so gucci man's wife yes and i read his biography like wonderful book mm -hmm. wonderful man and who has matured ex ex exponentially from you know his youth right so i respect his growth as a man right but basically snoop dogg made a post that said something along the lines of a lot of y'all want the marriage that keisha and gucci now have but y'all wouldn't be able to put up with all of the cheating that he did and you know y'all wouldn't be able to ride for him while he was in jail and so it kind of um can, and he's right because i would not i would not it, it condemns the girls that say no i wouldn't put up with that you yeah know? i mean it's what basically that post is saying is um Go through hell and water before you can reach your heavens and pretty much you know like no why should i be dragged through the mud with a man in order to get what i want in the end mm -hmm. and that's very damaging to very. your self-esteem to your womanhood to your own morals and beliefs what you were raised on it's very damaging and i don't agree with what he posted yeah. i did see that too that's why you know j cole has a song that he just released what is it uh well it was uh, Ty Dolla Sign song I Need You yeah I Purple need you more than me. ever yes and yes. Cole in the song is talking about how his wife told him I'm not riding for you if you catch a body or yes! you know you, yes, you get is. crazy you get you get sent away I'm I not riding it. for you I love it I and love he was it. like there's too many good women behind the fence that don't have that common sense yeah. so I definitely think it's time that we stop reinforcing these ideas and yes. keep girls yeah. in um these ride or die type of lifestyles no yeah no yeah, and that's essentially how girls get swept into that position of being loyal to potential. Yeah. So, all right. So we've done some crazy things for love. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think any woman's above that. Every woman has definitely had her moments of doing Every crazy woman. things. Yes. But you learn. You learn. Exactly. You, learn. you live and you learn. All right. So in chapter three, I, I, I write about this uh -huh. and I get very personal, very raw. And mm -hmm. I say this in the book. Okay. I was aware that men seemed to be the traditional milestones that often marked the beginning of trauma, negotiation, and decline for women where I was from. All right. So basically, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. But when I met my first love, mm -hmm. it's almost like this ancestral alarm clock went off like, all right, pay attention now because <laughs> the women around you and you know the history that makes up your roots it is often the man that upsets the beginning of trauma negotiation and downfall for young women and what i mean by that putting in putting it putting it into a practical example is you know i've met girls that i've looked up to since forever i mean smart beautiful mm -hmm. talented brilliant just so much life so many seeds of promises inside of them yeah. they meet a guy they get heavily invested into a relationship. And before you know it, it's almost like they have lost control of their destiny. And I, I yeah. find them in situations that I think that their potential should have, you know, surpassed. You know, mm -hmm. I just they end up putting up with things that they never should have put up with. 
dropping out of school, losing scholarships, not yeah. using their degrees because they want to support this man. I mean, I've seen it all. Yeah, and so it. for me, I was like, when I met, you know, the guy that I fell in love with, it was like, hold up now. <laughs> yeah. How can I pursue love? Because I do want marriage. I do right. want to be in love. What right. girl doesn't want that? Right. But how can I preserve myself and make sure that I don't forego my own ambitions? So my question to you is mm -hmm. that, you know, too often women do indulge in relationships that take precedence over their own self-identity and self-development. Right. And they do end up foregoing, foregoing their own dreams and ambitions. How can women prevent that? How can we still have the love that we want right. without losing ourselves? Okay. Well, I love that That's question. That's a loaded question. It's loaded, but it's necessary to speak about because even as my position as a mental health therapist... I've learned and I talk a lot to even the clients that I have about healthy boundaries, healthy boundaries. So um, a boundary is something um, not to be looked at as maybe like blocking something. So you never want to put a boundary in place that will like block from like emotions, right? So say you're in a relationship, you don't want to put a boundary up that will block an emotion. You want to put a boundary up that will more so protect your emotions or protect the woman that you are, right? Mm -hmm. So in relationships, us women have to put in certain healthy boundaries that protect who we are. So that's a boundary put in place where we can still love whoever it is that we love in our relationship, but we still can flourish as who we are as our own woman. But Alicia, how do we do that? Like, I, I hear what you're saying. Yes. It sounds really good when you package it like that. But in practical terms, <laughs> how can I do that? Because it got to the point for me when I when I met him, you know, I think it was like week three, he told me he loved me. I was like, you are crazy. Who knows if he <laughs> was really in love? I mean, that's to my own horror. I hey, am somebody, you know, I mean, worthy you know, of loving so early. But I was uh -huh. like, he might be running game. But nonetheless... I was not sold on it. I was like, boy, good for you. Bye. Good for you. Good for you. And it wasn't until until three months down the line I found myself even able to say I love you back. Mm. And then in terms of like talking about a future and finances, I remember the conversation <laughs> we had. I was like, I'm never sharing a joint account with you. Like I'm always gonna have yeah. my own money. Yeah. I'm not taking your last name. Yeah. Because I was so set for me, those were defense mechanisms to make sure I didn't lose myself. Like, mm -hmm. you want me to take your name? Like I can't even hyphen. Like, you want me to just take your last name yeah. now? Blatantly, I'm losing a part of my identity. I'm no no longer Lanisha Porter. I have to be Lanisha, whatever your last name is. Right. And, you know, in terms of, I mean, there were just many self-defense mechanisms I put in place to make sure that I didn't lose myself. Right. So, in other ways, how can young women make sure that when they do in enter into relationships, that they can have these healthy relationships, mm -hmm. but still not lose themselves? Um, so I think for you, for us women, we have to just first be aware of um, ourselves, maybe our unhealthy traits. So for me, sometimes when I get in relationships, a way that I show love is maybe I will spend lots of money, right? So I might um, always like want to take you out to dinner, just show you you're appreciated and things like that. But then when it's not reciprocated, then I feel that that knot in my stomach, right? Then I feel appreciated. Then I feel used. So then that's when I have to realize, no, I have to put a boundary there. I have to say to myself, I can still be in this relationship and show his, show him appreciation, but I need to put a boundary on what I'm doing, right? So I think you just have to be aware of your unhealthy traits. So what you're doing yeah. in the relationship. I think everyone's different. Every woman's different. We all do di things differently in a relationship. But first you have to be aware. Um, always be open. Always have a trusted person in your corner that you can talk to about your relationship. Oh, that is because, such a golden one. Yes, way. because... People can see things that you can't. When you're in a relationship, sometimes you're blinded by love, right? Yes. And you don't have that that rationale to see your unhealthy traits, but a friend will. And yes. they can say, hey, friend, hey, Lanisha, like, I'm noticing that, you know, you're spending way more time with your newfounded love than you are with putting into your literature, right? Very good. And mm -hmm. I think that's a very practical way in which we see young women kind of forego their own dreams yeah you know trying to invest in relationships you stop doing the things that benefit you exactly you stop tackling and prioritizing your exactly. own goals exactly 
And that's so important that you said having a trusted person in your corner. Trusted, one, yes. one tactic of man manipulation that I think men <laughs> can use yeah. is um, kind of isolating a woman in a relationship yeah. and, you know, making her feel like no one is going to love you or you can't foster this type of relationship with anyone outside of me. Right. So then she feels alone. She feels scared. She feels like no one will have the capacity to love her like this lover can. Right. And there's also a certain loyalty that comes with that too when a man makes you feel that way. You feel like you have to be disloyal to this person because he tells me I have to be. Yeah. He ha he tells me. So you, you are this level of loyalty to him. But it is manipulation. It is. It's definitely it manipulation. Is. So yeah. I think even when you do get into those relationships, when you meet your him or your lover, mm -hmm. um, making sure that you still prioritize the other relationships outside of that love. That's love super that. important. Super and important. personally, I feel a way when my girlfriends kind of cut me off for their dudes. It's not, yeah. you know, that I want to my monopolize monopolize all of her time. But right. Saying like, come on now, sis. Like, I do deserve a place in your heart. <laughs> And I'm feeling uncatered yeah. too. But you know, when you, especially when you get into a new relationship, that's kind of natural for us girls to like want to be, oh, lovey dovey, yeah. just spend all of our time. But yeah, but yes. I mean, like you said, sometimes you just got to point that out to your friend. Like, hey, friend, I love you. I love your new relationship, but don't forget about me. I'm over right? here too. Like, I love you. I got your back. Like, let's go have fun, right? Let's go have fun. You yeah. know, and also when it comes to creating healthy boundaries, you have to set aside time for yourself, right? So you have to keep a schedule for yourself because I don't think that us women notice, but we kind of like get a schedule with, with our guys or whoever mm -hmm. I, we're in love with, you know, oh, okay, Friday, we're going to do this with him. Yeah. Like every weekend we're going to do this. So we, we start to like create this schedule in our head and that's okay, but we also have to create a schedule for ourselves too, right? For sure. So like me, I am a blogger. So I had, when I was in a relationship, I had to set aside time for me to work on my blog and I will say that got hard. And I noticed that when I was in a relationship, I didn't write as many blogs as I wanted to, right? Yeah. I didn't take as many blogging pictures as I wanted to, right? Because no, I wanted to go watch movies with him or I wanted to go out to eat with him, right? Yeah. So it's a very natural thing. But the way that I came out of that is I have to say, wait, I have to recognize that. Wait, Alicia, you know, let's not do this. Like you can still love him and be in a relationship, but you have to be you. You have to do what you know yes. you want to do. You can still, mature, I mean, you can still pursue that love, right. nurture it, right, and still make time for yourself, Alicia, right, or Anisha, right. You can still prioritize and have your goals, right. Someone's one person's goals in the relationship doesn't have to dominate the whole relationship. No, it does not. No, it does not. And if he's a really good guy or whoever you are in love with, they will say, "Hey, I noticed you haven't been doing your blogging as much." Hey, I noticed you haven't been doing your publishing as much, right? So they'll they'll kind of keep you in check, right? They will. They and will. I will say with my first love, that's part of the reason I fell in love oh. with him was because he was very good at saying, you know, like, hang out with your friends or yeah. you haven't been hanging out with so-and-so lately, invite them over, let's go to yeah. brunch. And it was just like, wow. He cared. He cared. Yeah. And for me, that was really good because I yes. told you, for me, Men automatically, it was just like red flag yeah. because all the women that I know, I mean, was their downfall. Time, this was their downfall. Yeah. So to meet a guy that was intentional about saying, um, "Let's integrate, let's integrate your social groups too," I was like, "Wow, he's mm, different. He's different. He's different." He's different. No, that's awesome. <laughs> so that actually leads us into our next question. Yeah. Um. Let's see. What are some tremendous red flags of losing yourself in relationships? We kind of covered that, but um, mm -hmm. tackling it a bit more specifically, what are some red flags? I think we've already yeah. said, you know, um, one thing or one person dominating your time, right. allowing your lover to dominate your time. Right. Um, isolation, isolation, when that person wants to have you by themselves all the time. And, they, and that can also look like shaming you for wanting to spend time with your family exactly. or your friends exactly. or wanting to go to an event, exactly. although you've been with that person for the whole week. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what are some other red flags that we can possibly help um, other people raise their awareness to? Um, I would say check your mood. So if you're walking around always irritable, um, Maybe there's a reason why. Maybe um, the relationship that you're in, maybe it's toxic or maybe y'all have some things that y'all need to work out. Yeah. So therefore, you're walking around in an irritable mood. I know for me, that got that way too. I would notice at work, like 
I would just be like very short with people and mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. irritable, but I was not upset with them. I was upset with him yes. <laughs> and I carried it with me into the workplace. Yes. So I was like, okay, now he's affecting my mood, which is affecting <laughs> my relationships at work. And yes. that is a no, no. So I think for us, um, red flags, your mood. Um, a lot of times we can become anxious when we get in relationships, um, depending on the person we're with. So say we're with someone who has a history of cheating or who has cheated on you. Um, especially if they cheated on you, you'll, t uh, you'll, you'll start to have like an anxious type of attachment. So when he's not around you, you're always anxious. Like, oh, what if he's doing this? Yeah. Or, you know, just that not trust. Um, so that's a red flag too, how it makes you feel while you're in the relationship. Um, so yeah, so your Very mood... Good. If you're anxious, irritable, another red flag, um, I would say, I don't know, just if you're happy, if you're happy with life overall, a red flag. Also, making sure, just reevaluate how they treat you. Yeah. You know, are they living up to your standards? We all have standards, men and women, whoever. You know, are they living up to their standards? If you are a woman of faith or, you know, are they a man of faith too are they equally yoked right very good and i'm so glad you said that point because something else that happens when people get in relationships is like oh yeah. you may have been going to church and attending regularly oh. and you get in a relationship and it's like oh i'm gonna sleep in this sunday sips my tea <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm gonna tune in online oh i'm not gonna go and then before you know it you're not even dedicating time to god anymore and when God won't That's show attention, sis, flag. when God won't show attention, sis, he'll he will, get it. He will get it. Even he if it means obliterating it. that relationship. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely. That's a big red flag for me. Yes. yes. God will literally like, because y'all, I'll pray over something and then he'll be like, okay, whoo, and he'll sit it in my lap and I'll be like, whoa. You know, the, the meme where it's like the girl with the, with the little teddy bear behind well, the teddy bear in front of her, and then uh, that's guy standing in front of her, like, with the yes. teddy bear behind his back, and he's like, let it go, bigger. I have something better for you. Yeah. That's me. That's, yeah. That, that's how it is, you know. That's a red flag for me when I'm when I'm trying to hold on to something that I know God does not want me to. That's a red flag. I have to have more trust in God. I have yeah. to have more trust. So, yeah. Very good. Yeah. I think we've covered the red flags. And of course, yeah. feel free to drop some of the red flags that maybe we missed. Yeah. There's in the many. comments. There's there many, are many red flags. Many, many, many. We've not even gone into like, you know, the keeping the phone in the pocket all the time, the yeah. phone on the silent, that that kind of immature red flags. But yeah. yeah, there's many. So maybe we also talked about this too, but mm -hmm. what is the difference between compromising in a relationship? Because of course, a relationship you have to um, build it up. And right. oftentimes that means compromise, learning that person's love language, yep. understanding that everybody comes with their, their own set of values and they carry with them this unseen history. Right. And if you are invested in their relationship, you will do the due diligence of unpacking it and learning that person. Right. So that does call for compromise. But what right. is the difference between compromise and a healthy relationship and then just flat out betraying yourself? Hmm. So the difference between compromising and betraying yourself is you'll feel it. You'll feel it. That is so good. You'll feel it. You a compromise feel it. feels good when you're in a relationship and you're working on compromise with your partner. He'll, it'll feel good. But when you don't feel good and you feel like you're ex emotionally exhausted, so such as you putting more out than you're getting back yes. in, that's when you know you're betraying yourself. That's when you know you're not being appreciated or maybe that you just need to reevaluate the relationship and have that conversation with your partner like hey what are we doing you know i want to compromise i'm willing are you let's fix it right yeah that is so good yes you will feel the difference you will feel the difference mm -hmm. and compromise and i think something that i've learned along the way um when men sense that the compromise has surpassed actually being a compromise and they know that you're betraying yourself that gives them that tacit approval like i got her like she will continue to betray her own self mm. trespass against her own defenses to mm. give me what i want in mm. a relationship mm. Mm. and so i think for me something that lets me know okay this is no longer a compromise i'm betraying myself is when there are too many requests being made on his end 
for me to abide by. Yeah. It's like, all right, why am I always the one having to carry the heavier burden of this compromise? Exactly. Exactly. That's when I know, all right, exactly. this is a lopsided deal and it's not a fair trade. Exactly. Or for me, Lanisha, that too. But also when I have certain requests for my partner and they're not being met, then it's like, hmm, we're definitely not compromising. Yeah. We're definitely not compromising. We are not compromising. So yeah, there. you'll definitely feel it. You will. Don't don't ignore how you feel in the relationship. Yep. It's very vital. Very important. Yeah. That woman's intuition. Oh yes. God oh, yes. gave it to us. That's the instrument that he gave us that is just activated. Like you know. Mm -hmm. And then you will collect evidence to support why you know. Exactly. Why you know you know. Exactly. And if you you know, if you're struggling with compromise in your relationship, that's not to me a deal breaker. That's not to say, yeah. Well, I need to be done with this relationship. No, that's for you to recognize it, bring it forth, right? So talk to your partner about what you're noticing. For sure. And then together work on it. Um, never be afraid to ask again a trusted person to come in and maybe help you to work on it. So if that's like a mentor, an older adult, someone you trust, like a parent, a friend that you trust, yeah. someone who does Very it good. is not one-sided, right? So Very good. I wouldn't bring like one of my bestest friends in because they'll always... No, you should do this because it's not a, a making Alicia already. exactly. They're very biased, and you don't want a biased, trusted person to have so much input on your relationship because nobody's wrong. We all have our faults, we all have our flaws, and we just have For to work sure. it out. So that's yeah. very good because I know if I was 19 years old watching this. I would say with every red flag, okay, I got to head for the door. And <laughs> yeah. We don't want to send that message out, but no. we are saying those red flags are things that you should investigate, look yes. into, yes. and follow the lead that it's giving you. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. Do you have any closing thoughts on when you meet him? For me, you know, I think why I wrote this chapter was to really sit down and be honest and authentic and interrogate, you know, um, the reservation I had about really being able to have a healthy relationship, knowing that I haven't had a history of seeing successful relationships right. in my family. Mm -hmm. I don't come from a family of marriages. Mm -hmm. um, I've never seen it up close. Right. More so what I have seen up close is women literally being drained mm -hmm. out of their generosity, their talents, and their brilliance yeah. to accommodate relationships that almost always go nowhere. Yeah. So for me, as I said, that set off this ancestral alarm clock. Like the women before me, the women mm -hmm. before me, they've always, men have just always been that downfall. Yeah. And so in this chapter, I really struggle with saying like, how can I be a good partner? Yeah. How can I be optimistic about going into a healthy relationship? Yeah. But still protecting myself from Most the very definitely. real pitfalls that are out there for a young woman yes. trying to develop in a romantic relationship. So... For me, chapter three, that's what that was about. But your closing thoughts on it? So my closing thoughts on when you find him, um, first, find yourself. First, work on yourself. Work on yourself. <laughs> I mean, I'm a therapist, so I'm always encouraging people, find a therapist, someone that you can talk to. You don't have to have trauma history, but if you do, it's very important that you have an outside professional input that you could talk to, work through. The moment you begin working on yourself, the universe will align with you and he will come for you. When I say he or whoever your partner may be, that's when love will find you because you are your truest self. You've worked mm -hmm. on you. You don't want to meet someone when you're hurt, right? When you have a lot of trauma that keeps replaying in ways, whatever those ways may be, right? Because you're not who you need to be for your partner, right? Mm -hmm. So work on you. And hopefully, you know, the guys out there, you're listening this, to this too. Work for on sure. you, right? Work so that you, you can have your dream girl, who you, who God wants you to be with, right? For sure. So, and when love finds you or when you find him, you'll just know it. You'll, you'll know, know it. it. You won't have to trick yourself into believing in it. You'll feel it. You'll feel good. It won't be hard. You know, nothing, no relationship would be easy, but it won't be hard. I yeah. don't think the relationship should be hard. I think that they come with struggles, but they should flow. You should work through those struggles. So you'll know. And that's coming from a trained professional. She's that's telling y'all free game. <laughs> right, yeah. That's very good. Um, one thing that I will say before we close out yeah. is I had a elder from my church tell me, he said, Lanisha, mm -hmm. 
when you meet your husband, it's not about finding your other half. He mm-hmm. said, I don't know why people put that out in the world. He said, you know, you should already be whole mm. and they're coming and they're just complimenting what's already mm. there. And that came from an elder. He was a man. Mm. And I was like, wow. Mm. Already be whole. Don't go out looking for your other half. Right. Go out looking for the one that's going to compliment you. That's it. Wow, I love that. Right, that's it. So now is the portion of the show where we're getting into our fan feature. What is a fan feature? A fan feature is a chance where we hear from our audience and they tell us their greatest life lesson that has been recurring in their life. Mm. This week, we are hearing a life lesson from Jason Jewell of Texas. His life lesson is simply this. Time and place. Mm very self-explanatory what did you take from that alicia <laughs> time and place first thing that popped into my mind the first word is very important time and place yeah i am also a firm believer that whatever place you currently are in life is for a reason that time right now me being here with you is important it's for a reason for me to be here guest appearing on this show i think time and place is very important and you'll always realize I'm at this certain place in my life for a reason. God has placed me here for a reason. For sure. This time right now, this struggle, this time that I might be facing adversity or whatever I may be going through, it's for a reason. Um, And I always like to say, no matter what place or what time you are in your life, blossom like a flower, right? So good. A flower does not get to choose where it's planted. But what they don't do, they... What they don't do is they don't shrink and they don't not grow, right? They grow, especially out in nature. God will provide everything a plant needs to grow. And we are plants and we're going to grow. He's going to give us everything that we need to grow. That is stinking good. Yes. So time and place is always on your side. Trust it. Even if it's hard, even if it's not exactly where you want to be, blossom. That is so good, Alicia. Yes. Oh. Yes. You guys, that was good. Yeah. She just poured into my spirit. I, that one gets me too. Yeah. Blossom where you are planted. Blossom where you are planted. That's good. For me, time and place, the life lesson that I would take out of that is um, everything does not need a reaction. That's what I have learned in my maturity. Yes, yes maturity. Um, and if you do plan to react, be aware of where you are reacting at. And be aware if it really even needs that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So prioritize what you react to and if it really calls for it. That's what I take out of time and place. Right. Yeah. Because right. I've been known to go off in moments that did not serve me best. Mm-hmm. Like we all do. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Sounds like you learned from that, though. I learned. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, like, God is working said. on my fruits of the spirit. Yes. <laughs> We learn it. And like you said, not everything needs a reaction. Yeah. Yes. And you'll you'll learn that as you get older. As you Yeah. Patience and discernment, you know. those are gonna be powerful weapons for you as you grow. Yes. If you learn that, ooh, nothing can unsettle you, nothing can mm-hmm. vex your spirit to such a point where the enemy wins. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Very good. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jason, for that. If you are interested yeah. in sending in your life lesson to us, you can write me in at inspire at info. Alicia, thank you so much for joining us as we talked about yes. maximizing her chapter yes. three when you meet him. Um, this was a good conversation. It was. And I know that it's going to help a lot of people. Yes. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. I'm I so love glad. the questions. I love being <laughs> able just to talk, reveal even some parts of myself that people might, might not know about. So yeah. I'm very thankful to have been here today. Good. Well, we you're always welcome back. Yes. All right. So catch us next week, next Thursday at 8 p.m. We are getting into chapter four, which is overcoming your 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 first heartbreak. Uh, you can mm-hmm. always find these episodes on my website, LanishaPorter.com. We will see you next week. Until then, thank you so much for tuning in to Life Lessons and Lattes.